Brett Condy Floss News and no political spin. This is Truth Radio by Internet. Thanks to our sponsor, Nemewell.com, because here, the expression is still free. It's a scam, it's a rip-off, and it's been going on for a hundred years. But maybe now, thanks to one man and the internet, the great eyeglasses scam is coming to an end. You're on the next level on BreakForNews.com. Would you do me a favor and push me on to the next level? And you are on the next level, and this is Finton Dunn reporting. Thanks for joining us. Thanks also to our sponsor, Neemwell.com, your personal source for potent Indian neem. It's the world's most popular herb, and it's almost unknown outside of India. But Cathy McMahon formulates it in a hypoallergenic base, and you can get more details at Neemwell. That's N-E-E-M-W-E-L-L.com. And speaking of things that are unheard of, some of you may have heard about this con, this rip-off, this complete scam. But if you haven't, well, this should be an eye-opener. Pardon the pun. My guest in this edition is Donald Rame. He's the founder of the Myopia Prevention Association. And he has been working since 1972, 3, 4, 5 in particular, to expose the scam that is prescription glasses. There's some good news and some bad news. The bad news is that if you're over, say, 30 years of age, then it's unlikely that you can do anything to reverse short-sightedness. However, the good news is that we now have the information, thanks to Donald and thanks to the power of the Internet to get that information out, in order to ensure that the next generation of children does not suffer the short sight and diminishment of vision with age that this generation has. To put it in a nutshell, what's been going on for close on a hundred years is that the distance vision glasses prescribed to treat short sight make it even worse and ensure that children slowly get more and more short sighted. That's a problem we're finding in the Far East in particular, where rates in Singapore now are in the order of 80%. But, hey, it isn't just today or yesterday this is happening. Let's go back to the case of the Eskimos. Back in 1969, a study came out of 1,200 Eskimos in Barrow, Alaska. What it found was that following the adoption of Western education for their children, Eskimo children were demonstrating rates of short-sightedness in the order of 65%. Guess what the rate of short-sightedness was in their parents, who hadn't done all that close-up reading that we do in modern education. It was virtually nil. Of course, once you're exposed to books and if you're inside an igloo half the year, there's not much else to do, is there? And that's not the only study. Study after study back over the years has shown that in fact it is our close reading that's causing short sight. And the real tragedy is there is a solution, a solution which can be deployed, a protection which can be given to children to make sure that they don't have the short-sightedness that is plaguing an entire generation across the planet as we speak. Let's get into more detail on the actual mechanics of this and some tips and advice for the young and indeed for the older a little later in the show, but first I'd like to go straight to our guest, Donald Rame, who's joining us on the line from Florida. You're very welcome, Donald. Thanks for joining us today. Thank you. I'm glad to be here. Okay, and I'm glad you're here, because we may not be able to do a great deal for the current generation, Donald, but we can do an awful lot for the next one that's coming up. That's right. Donald, I remember very well, back at the age of about 14 or 15, when I used to be able to see the numbers on the bus as it turned the corner 400 yards away, and then it all went badly wrong and my vision deteriorated. The same thing happened to you. You experienced a deterioration in vision when you were studying engineering, but you didn't accept the conventional wisdom. What did you do and what did you feel was going on, Donald? I was about 18 when I first noticed that I was having some vision problems in the distance, and uh, of course I went to the library and 
all I found there was that it was inherited, and I just couldn't uh, believe that. And of course, the last thing I wanted to do was put glasses on my nose the rest of my life. So I started looking a little further, and I heard that uh, some optometrists were using reading glasses on young children to try to prevent myopia. In other words, the same kind of glasses that older folks use. Uh, so I got myself a pair of those glasses and uh, used them uh, every day when I was reading, and sure enough, my vision came back to normal. So I. I figured I had something there. Right. That's how it all got started. Okay. The conventional wisdom at the time I experienced, my decrease in vision, was that it was puberty-related. What is the conventional wisdom now, or do they even admit to having any wisdom behind the current system? Well, uh, that was one of the theories that you just mentioned. Uh, There's been an awful lot of different theories about it. It's almost as if, uh, as they say, they're looking at the trees and fail to see the forest. We know that over 100 years ago, the researchers noted that people who use their eyes for close work a lot, like bookkeepers, were very often nearsighted. And people who use their eyes mostly for distance, like soldiers, were rarely nearsighted. So as far as I'm concerned, that's all the research we've ever needed into why this is happening and what you can do about it. Uh, the more you use your eyes for reading and such, uh, the more likely you are to, uh, to become nearsighted. Now, there are a few people who are lucky, and they, they seem to read a lot, and they don't become nearsighted. But uh, mm-hmm. that's certainly not the rule. And in some of these Far Eastern countries, like uh, Singapore and uh, Taiwan and Japan, something like more than 90% of the college graduates are now nearsighted. And we still have eye doctors telling us, well, it's inherited. Well, it can't be inherited because increases like that just don't happen in a short period of time. And uh, as you probably know, in some of those countries, they start teaching their kids to read at a very young age, which is, which is very harmful. Uh, they study hard to, to, to get ahead in life. Mm-hmm. Uh, they have to deal with those mysterious oriental characters when they write and all that. So it's a, it's a terrible burden on their eyes, and that's why we're seeing this. But uh, the rest of the world isn't far behind, and now that kids go home from school, and instead of going out and playing ball, uh, they're several hours on their computer. So we're seeing this kind of increase in all these uh, modern nations. Okay. And mechanically speaking, just so people get a clear picture of what's happening, in order to see close up, there's a muscular contraction takes place. You have a lens just behind the pupil of your eye, and it, when the lens changes shape, that's how you focus different distances. And the ciliary muscle actually goes right around that lens, just like a, a ring around your finger. Mm-hmm. And, and when you want to look at something close, that circular muscle contracts, and it makes the lens thicker, and it bends the rays of light more. And uh, we're all born farsighted. This means that this that the eye is a little bit shorter than ideal, and so this focusing effort, this accommodation, has to take place at all distances, even if, even when we look into the distance. And when this goes on for a long period of time, that muscle locks up, goes into a kind of spasm. This means that you could sleep eight hours and it would still be there. Yes. And the body the body does this for a reason, because this triggers by pulling on the tissues around the rear of the eye, an elongation of the eye. And the idea is that the eye will elongate until it has reached the ideal length so that your focusing muscles inside the eye are at rest for distance. And that's where it's supposed to stop. And that's where it does stop if we're illiterate or if we're uh, monkeys living in the wild and so forth. Mm-hmm. But when we continue to do prolonged close work, the eye passes through the ideal length and it becomes abnorm- abnormally long. And that's what myopia is, an abnormally long eye. Now, it's bad enough that we have the nuisance and the expense of wearing glasses, but what, what most people don't understand and what they aren't told by their eye doctors is that, is that uh, as myopia increases, you become more and more at risk for certain serious eye problems like retinal detachment, macular degeneration, glaucoma, 